this teacher says, don't talk to me, I'm counting. I thought that this t-shirt for this episode was perfect because we're gonna talk about the peacock tee and that lace pattern. It's my first time knitting a lace pattern and how this t-shirt relates to that pattern and that project. Welcome to Love of Fibers. I'm Liz and I love sharing everything about fiber arts, knitting, crocheting, and sometimes sewing as well. Today is episode four and we will be covering our usual finished objects, whips, and acquisitions. So for this month, the month of July, I have two finished objects and they're sewing projects which I'm very proud of and I'm very excited to share. My first sewing project is this zippered boxed pouch. I wanted to make a small pouch that had some structure to carry small projects. For example, socks or a beanie or gloves, anything small. Look at this fabric. Isn't this beautiful? I love this fabric. I actually bought this fabric, you guys, for, I bought two quarters. Each quarter was 50 cents. It was on clearance. So this was, I think in spring, like early spring, they were getting rid of all the fall and Halloween collection fabrics. And it was a big bin clearance. It was at Joanne's, Joanne's Fabrics and 50 cents. So I bought two quarters. I can totally use this to make this little project that I had wanted to make. And it was so much fun. I cannot believe I made this. It was my first box zipper pouch. So it's my first zipper ever. So I had done corners before for my other bag, which I showed in a previous episode. I was familiar with how to make corners. So that wasn't, you know, anything difficult or anything like that. I didn't find the project difficult at all. I didn't follow anything or, you know, have a pattern or anything. I just pretty much took the two quarters. I believe I did a little bit bigger than 10 by 10s. Then I added some batting. I believe I did like the firm. So this way it had like a little structure, but not too much. I think it's the one they use. I bought, it's really good, I love it. It's the one that they use to do the collars of shirts. So it's thin, but it's stiff. So it worked out great. And it's cool because it's just an iron on. When I had, I cut the fabric and you know, I, I just sewed it and I, the corners were easy for me. All of it was easy. Again, the zipper was like the thing for me that I never ever done. So I was kind of like a little intimidated, but, but I managed. I used the zipper foot on my sewing machine, which is fantastic because you can put it, you know, on the left of your needle or on the right of your needle. So you can sew close to the edge on the zipper. The other thing that I did here that was kind of cool, it's that, and you'll see that if you go to my Ravelry project, you'll see, like I put pictures, is that when I cut the fabric, remember how I told you I didn't have a pattern or anything? I kind of just did my own thing. Well, okay. So because I did my own thing, the zipper that I had was too small for the fabric that I cut. So I believe the zipper was about 10 inches. And when I cut my fabric, I needed, I think maybe like a 12 inch zipper because I was missing an inch on both sides, like on both ends. What I ended up doing was that with my scrap of fabric, I added a piece to each end and I just sewed it on the sewing machine to extend the zipper. So it was good and bad. It was good because it resolved the issue of the whole zipper thing because I didn't have any other big zipper and I didn't want to wait to order and then to get it. I just wanted to do the, um, the pouch. So I did that. So that little hack was great. So if you're ever in a situation like that where you have a zipper that's too short, just add fabric. So like when you cut your fabric, any scraps that you have, don't throw them out. Just keep them because they're always useful. When I said it was bad, it was because I originally wanted the pouch to open from this end all the way to this end. So it would open wider. But obviously because I had to do a little zipper hack here, it doesn't, but it's not that serious. Like I only lose one inch on both sides. So it's still good. Let me show you. Oh, and I, I just love the color. I love the structure. I put this little cute little leather handle. That way it's just easier to open and close the zipper. If I make another one, one thing that I would do different is I would put like a little tab here. So that way when you go to open the zipper, you have somewhere to hold. Like in this one, I don't. I pretty much, you know, hold the like here and then I can open. I mean, it's fine, but you know, little things that you learn that are great to 
take notes and then you can add in your future projects so but look how cool you guys it opens really nicely the zipper smooth it opens pretty wide as you can see i have two two cakes in there of dk weight yarn which i love this yarn i'm gonna make socks with that my daughter bought that for me as a gift so i was just testing it out and you see it's perfect so i have two cakes dk weight and i still have room to put my actual like socks project while i'm knitting them or if it's a beanie or fingerless gloves or whatever the case may be so it's actually really great and it's perfect and i can throw it in a toe i can take it to go easily um also it just like if it's empty it's easy to pack so it's great the inside is the same fabric i did the same fabric on the inside and the outside like i said remember i said i bought two quarters so i just used them i'm happy with this little project my second finished object is also a sewing project so my girls and i we love animal crossing when i went to joanne's they were having a huge sale on licensed fabrics and i found animal crossing and i bought a yard and i figured i can make some roll of pencil cases for my girls so i made these and i i already had this leather cord and so i figured it would be just like a nice little touch and easy to just roll up and close it up let me show you you can you see one of my girls did they used it for all their like color pencils and markers and my other daughter i believe is using it for the same thing she was thinking of using it maybe for her crochet hooks but i told her to just try it and if they don't fit then i'll make her one for crochet hooks because i made the the slots specifically to fit pencils or markers the crochet hooks the smaller ones might fit but the larger ones might not because the body are thicker if not she said she'll use it for her coloring pencils and then i'll make her one for her crochet hooks so she's gonna let me know but they both love them so much like I, again i said it's super easy easy to make you can you know do different colors you can do so many things you can get really creative with these and on the inside again i use the same interface it's like a body the same interface that i use for the zipper pouch it's it's nice because it's firm but it's not thick and bulky so you can still it has some structure but you can still kind of like roll it up nicely basically just easy to tie i didn't want anything too difficult for them to tie it and wrap it and easy to open up and so you just unroll it like this they can put all their all their pencils in there and they can take it on you know they could take it in the car on the plane they can just it's it's easy to to pack and to take with them and i love i love cases like this because when you're going to color you have you can see all the pencils all at once and you're not digging through a pouch to get them out things are not spilling especially like if you travel a lot like on the plane these are practical and useful you know when you open that tray it's so great and easy to use this was my second finished object for the month let's move on to whips i am working on the pebble top which is a camisole from Lynnit. and hold on let me just show you my yarn is all tangled up, so give me one second. So this is the pebble top from Lynette. I am so in love with this pattern. This is such a fun pattern for me because it was cool to see how I went from four triangles to this camisole. I'll be behind the camisole while I talk to you so you can appreciate it. It goes from four triangles, right? And then you join them and you keep working on the round to work the body and it's super cool to see you know going from four triangles to to this i'm already you know working the body these little strings that i'm holding up they're actually not i just tie them like this to be able to show you they will be weaved in because the straps are actually crocheted so we're going to crochet the straps and crochet the detail around the top of the camisole so i'm really excited about that and also i believe the bottom of the of the ribbing is also a crochet detail so i'm really really excited about that and looking forward to it i'm having fun working on this camisole for sure the only thing is you know it's it's small needles you know it's a lot of knitting <laughs> because the stitches are really really small but it's nice because it's all stuck in it right now so you can just kind of like take this project with you anywhere you can sit and knit while you watch tv and you don't have to worry about well at least for myself 
I don't have to worry about making mistakes or anything like that. And also when you start this pattern, it's also easy to take with you because you have to make one triangle at a time. So you make four and they're exactly the same. So you can totally take this with you and it's easy. And then once you join in the round and you're working the body, it's the same too. It's super easy to take with you. I am making the pebble top in Lion Brand Cotton Bamboo Linen. This is the first time I work with Summer Fibers from Lion Brand. And this color is hazelnut. It's a sport weight. I like it and it's really nice. It's not harsh on your hands or anything like that. The only thing is that it's a little bit splitty, so that's a little bit annoying, but, but I've heard that a lot of plant fibers tend to do that, tend to be splitty, so I guess it's just part of it, so it's fine. The other thing is that the pattern doesn't call for this yarn, obviously. It calls for something else. I don't remember. I ended up just picking this yarn, and I make gauge. It's the same weight, sport weight, and I made gauge for it. My skeins were a little bit less yardage. So I just calculated the total yardage needed. And so I bought more just to have enough. And I think I'll be fine. And like I said, the most important thing is to me gauge. And I did for my size. So it's perfect. I, it fits me well and I'm happy with it. I cannot wait to finish it. Right now I'm just kind of working this pattern in the round. And then when I finish it and I do the ribbing, then I go, I come with the crochet hook and do the, the, the straps and all the, all the edge detail. And the other thing is that I'm using like a three millimeter needle. And I don't know if you guys remember in the previous episode when I talked about the three millimeter ginger needles that I picked up in Paris. Well, these are it and I love them. They're smooth and so, so light. And the, the, the end, the tip is sharp enough to you know to knit and glide so it's perfect and i find that working with these plant fibers on the wood needles it's a nicer experience for me personally now the other thing that i wanted to say is that you probably can't tell here but i actually have two different needles let me see if you can see that the black one is knitter's pride carbons and then the other one is the Nipro Ginger Needle. Okay, so I have a metal and I have a wood. So the metal is holding my stitches and the wood is the one that I'm working with. The reason I have this crazy mix match of needles is because my wood one snapped. I went to change the cable and it just snapped. Since I bought them in Paris and I'm here in the US, it's very difficult for me to you know, contact the store and get a replacement. I contacted Knit Pro by email and I obviously, you know, it, they're brand new. I sent them my receipt and everything like that and explained to them because I'm in the US and you know, the store was in Paris, they're gonna replace the needles for me, which is fantastic because I really, really do love them. The thing that I learned about these tiny wood needles, because these were my first tiny wood needles, is that they're very delicate. So going forward, I think that any needle that it's three millimeter down, like, you know, three millimeter, 2.5, 225, 275, two, anything like that, I'm going to most likely buy them fixed and not interchangeable. And what I'll do is I'll buy them fixed and then I'll buy two, two cables, you know, like two length, one maybe, 16 inch and then one maybe 40 inch you know so i can have for both for like for collars and bodies and i'll be fine and i don't have to you know try to put pressure to to change the cable because i don't want to experience that again the little needle snapping in half i mean not in half but like at the joint you know where you change the cable and then the carbon, I bought these just to try and they're okay. The only thing is that I actually had to get a replacement for the carbons because when I was working, these are the needles that I originally had on this project. And when I was working on this project, I kept saying, why is my, my yarn constantly like snagging? And it was because the tip of the other, the other needle was, was chipped. So anyway, I got those replaced as well. I didn't get to experience much because again, it, I, I think it came like that broken chipped at the tip and it just kept snagging on my yarn. So that was kind of frustrating. But anyway, so this is the Pebble Top. It's from Lene. It's a great camisole. It's super cute. I am excited to finish it and uh, be able to wear it in the summer. And also I'm looking forward to seeing how this Lion Brand yarn, how it blocks, but it's so pretty. It feels really, really nice. It feels nice. 
so i'm happy about that and it's not heavy either it's a nice blend it's the lion brand cotton bamboo linen it's sport weight it's 164 yards per 50 grams and the color of this is hazelnut if anybody's interested and again i i really like the yarn it's it's really nice it works up nice it's just a little splitty but aside from that it's okay oh one thing i wanted to talk about the pebble top pattern is that when i bought the pattern there was a little bit of confusion and i am assuming that all of that is caused by the translation and i believe the designer realized that so they went ahead and did an update and i updated the pattern i reprinted the pattern it's so much better so now like if you get it it's like great it's perfect so i really appreciate that my next whip is the peacock tea what an adventure this tea has been for me. This is my first time working a lace pattern and I love the yoke pattern on this tea and that's why I selected it. My experience with this pattern, let's start with the fact that the pattern, again, that pattern is translated and it's old. I think it came out in 2021 and it hasn't been updated yet. I had some mistakes and some of the wording is, is kind of weird and I think it's because of the translation. The designer by email, no complaints. Excellent, excellent support. Emailing me right away, responded to all my questions. It was fantastic. My experience was great. The designer told me that they're aware that there were some mistakes and some words that were like confusing because of the translation. They were working on it and they were gonna put out an update to the pattern. So that's really good for people that are thinking of doing it for the future. Like I said, the questions, the mistakes that I found or anything that I was confused about, I emailed them, they emailed me right away, they explained, so it was fantastic. And also I found that when you go to Ravelry to the project page, I wasn't the only one with these questions. There were the same questions that I asked and also some other questions. And the designer had got on there and responded and then other knitters had also responded to these questions. So also you can reference that for any concerns that you have or any questions that you might have if you intend to, to knit this pattern. So that was the only negative on the pattern. But again, it's not anything specific to the pattern itself. The pattern, the work is gorgeous. It's more the translation, you know, and like I said, it's not anything that you can't manage. You can ask the questions or you can go and look at those comments and the, the answers are there too for some of them. So I'm working the Peacock Tea in the yarn that it's called for, which is Sadness Garnline. And also I make gauge with the needles that it's called for. So I didn't have to modify my needle sizes. For a first time lace knitter, the chart is easy to follow. It's simple. It's not complicated at all. You can completely do it. What happened with me, and that's why I was laughing at the, when I told you about my t-shirt, is that I had to pull back so many times. When I was working on this pattern, you have to be quiet. Well, at least for me, some people might be able to work on a chart with people talking to them, with distractions and things like that. I can't, I have to focus and I cannot have distractions, people talking to me or anything like that because I will mess up. And that's exactly what happened to me with this pattern. There was a lot of commotion. There was a lot of things going on in our life in general during the time that I was trying to work on this pattern. And that caused me to miss certain stitches on the chart and create these mistakes, which when I would finish the round or two rounds or three rounds, whatever it may be, and I would lay it out flat and I would look, I would realize that, why is this looking like this? Something's wrong, something's off. And then I would realize and I would have to rip back to fix it. So I ended up doing that like four times. And finally, thank goodness, I managed to do the entire chart, no mistakes, and I have a beautiful, beautiful pattern here. It's just really gorgeous. I am so in love with this tee. I cannot wait. I already separated four sleeves and body, and now I'm gonna start working the raglan increases. And I cannot wait to wear this and to finish it. It's so pretty. This is my first time working with Sanis Garnaline, and my experience with this yarn, amazing. I would buy this yarn over and over again. I love it. It does not split at all. It doesn't matter how many times I pulled back. The yarn stayed exactly the way it was the first time. It's it's very light. The stitch structure is beautiful, the definition. And I'm really excited about this yarn and working with this yarn and finishing the project and seeing how it blocks. 
So definitely, I would recommend Sadness Garnine. If anybody's interested in working with this yarn, beautiful. I would buy it over and over again. So like I said, this pattern, for someone that's interested in working lace pattern for the first time, that never, you know, you've never tried it, I would totally recommend it. It's easy. It's an easy pattern repeat for you to do. And the end result is just beautiful. So like I said, the mistakes that were made were on my part, not, you know, due to, to the chart. It was because again, I had distractions. With a pattern like this or any, you know, any lace repeat, just like color work, you cannot miss a stitch in the chart because it will just throw off the entire pattern. So you, you're forced to rip back. And so working on this lace pattern and ripping back so many times, it made me think about frogging, right? And the, the different kind of knitters. I wonder what kind of knitter are you? Are you the kind of knitter that regardless of how many mistakes you make, how many times you have to rip back, you'll go ahead and rip back and start from scratch. Even if it means going all the way up to, you know, your collar. I'm that kind of knitter. It doesn't matter how many times I have to rip back. If I have a mistake, I will do it. At the end of the day, all this effort and the cost of the yarn and all this effort that I'm putting in, I want a finished piece that I'm going to love and that I'm going to wear all the time. So I will rip back no matter what and, and do it again. Of course, if I love the pattern. Now, are you the kind of knitter that has a limit to the times you're willing to rip back and start again? My next whip is crochet. I'm making a granny square tote bag and I thought it would be fun for summer, right? Look how cute. So I did five different colors and I'm using, this is worst day weight, 100% cotton and it is the Lily Sugar and Cream yarn. In total, I made six granny squares. I made four that are small. I already weaved in the ends on these. And these, as you can see, I still have to do that. And then I made two big ones. I am going to use the big granny squares. One is gonna be the front and the back, right? I am going to use my small ones as my side panels. So I'll have, you know, two and two. I made like different colors for my sides. That way, you know, just to keep it fun. I didn't wanna have like all the squares in the same sequence, even though it's the same colors, a different sequence and then the bottom of the toe i'm just gonna have i'm not gonna have granny squares you can do that if you want to but i'm not i'm just gonna crochet the bottom to have like you know crochet bottom and what i'm thinking of doing with this one is i want to i want to line this and i'll use my sewing machine i'm gonna line the toe and also that's why i didn't really it didn't really matter that the granny squares are so open i used a um a five crochet hook for this so I'm going to line it, but I'm like designing it because I want to do a separate pocket, but I also want to have just, you know, open pockets. I might put in some other little things just to kind of make it more personal for myself of the things that I know that I like in a tote. And also the other thing that I'm thinking is that most granny square crocheted tote bags, the strap tends to be the same crochet, like they just crochet the handle, I mean. But I don't want to do that because I feel that over time that stretches. Cotton always have give. And I, you know, if you put anything that's heavy over time, it'll stretch. I'm most likely going to do a belting strap, which is basically it's a strap made out of like thick cotton. And it's what you see in like canvas tote. So I'm probably going to sew something in like that for my tote. That way I don't have to worry over time, over stretching. And so I'm really excited, you guys, to do this. And, you know, I'll keep you posted and I'll, I'll show you the final tote bag. It should be fun. I, like I said, all my granny skirts are done. I just need to weave in ends for these four. And then I can, you know, I can put them together and then I can start working on the lining. So that's it for all my whips. Things I learned while ripping back so many times the lace pattern. So there's benefits to the ripping back of your pattern. First, if it's a lace pattern, every time you rip back, it will make you learn the repeat automatically. So when you come back around to actually knit that repeat, that, you know, that chart design, it's so easy because now you've learned the pattern. So it's very easy to do it. Make sure you pay attention when you rip back your work. You actually learn how stitches look after being worked so now you know how they sit on your work once they've been worked whether it's knitted or purled or anything else you also become 
more comfortable with lifelines. And if you don't use lifeline, like sometimes I don't, you learn how to fix drop stitches very quickly. The other thing that I also learned is that specifically for a lace pattern, I think that if you're working in the round, completely stuck in it, I don't think it matters as much, but for a lace pattern is that I learned not to use a stitch marker at the beginning of round stitch marker or at my raglan increases that's open because I found that when it's open it gets caught in the yarn at least for me and when I come back around and I'm knitting and I try to like fix it and untangle it from the yarn it tends sometimes it moves and I only notice that once my when I come around and I look at my pattern and it's off that happened to me with the peacock tee because it's open it like got tangled and then it was shifted and my lace was was not was not even and I had to go back and undo and I ended up just putting like a closed stitch marker for the raglan increases I always do closed stitch markers because I learned the hard way the first raglan that I made I had kind of like these funky open stitch markers and my raglan increases were all wonky they were all like like off they weren't like nice and you know in 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 the pattern and so I learned my lesson and I always put closed stitch markers for that and now for this I learned also closed closed stitch markers I wonder if that's something that only happens to me or is that something that is also common, you know, to other knitters using open stitch markers? Let me know in the comments if that's happened to you or if you are aware that that happens and so you always use a closed stitch marker because I'm curious, I'm wondering if I'm the only one that that's happened to or there's other knitters that have encountered the same thing also. Talk acquisitions for the month. Lion Brand had a huge sale this month online, 35% off. So I took advantage and bought some summer yarns. I have so many summer patterns that I want to make and I didn't have any summer yarn. So this was perfect timing. So let's get into it. Let me show you. I bought and the colors are so beautiful. And also for some reason, this, all this really nice yarn, you cannot find at like, like Michael's and Joanne carries Lion Brand, but for some reason they don't carry this kind of yarn only online so it was fine i ordered it and it shipped right away and it was great i didn't want to miss out on 35 percent off so i bought some more cotton bamboo linen this is the same yarn that i'm using for the pebble top and this color is just oh so beautiful let me show you so this is the cotton bamboo linen from lime brand it's a sport weight and look at this color, how beautiful this is. And this is, let me see, evergreen. And it's a beautiful, beautiful green. Like I said, I wanted to take advantage of the sale because I have patterns that I wanna make for summer. I didn't have any summer yarn, except for you know the ones that I'm working on for my peacock tee and my pebble top. So I was like, let me take advantage of the 35% off. And then I can go through and select the different patterns that I wanna make with the yarn that I bought. And I bought enough, did I have enough to make either a tee or a camisole on, you know, in this, in this evergreen. The next one that I bought is cotton bamboo only. This is a DK weight. And again, this is a Lion brand. I haven't opened any of these yarns yet. I just got the, the order. I wanted to sort out my yarn and select my patterns. So this is cotton bamboo. It's DK weight and it is in the color Magnolia. It's kind of like a cream color. It is so beautiful and it's very, very soft. It's so pretty. So for this yarn i actually have a pattern in mind and i bought the amount needed to be able to make it and it is the ingrid summer sweater and it is from gregoria fibers i already own the pattern i've been wanting to make that sweater since i saw the pattern i was like oh my god i love it i want it i think it comes in two versions like a heavier one and then the light summer one which is the one that i bought i think it's gonna be beautiful in this color and I can wear it in the summer and cool nights over dresses, over a, a little camisole. It's gonna be a beautiful, beautiful sweater. And I'm excited to cast that on, but I wanna finish what I have now before I move on to other projects. The next yarn that I bought, it's the same kind. It's the Cotton Bamboo Lime Brown also. And the color is Snapdragon. <laughs> Such a fun name. It's a... Uh, 
it's a green but it's such a pretty green let me see if you can appreciate that i believe it's a 50 50 cotton bamboo and this one i don't have a pattern in mind again i just wanted to take advantage of the sale and have the yarns here so i can now go through my patterns and start deciding on what I'm going to make with these yarns and these colors. The next yarn that I picked up was True Boo, and this is 100% bamboo. And I believe this is this is also DK weight. This color is slate and it's gorgeous. Oh, I love this color. And this yarn is so silky and so soft. This is going to create such beautiful drape. Again, going to sort out through my patterns to see what I want to make with this. It's again, a, just a beautiful, beautiful color. I am so in love with this slate color. Definitely, I'm gonna do a tank top or like a camisole or something like that with this color. And so that's all my yarn acquisition for the month. And again, these are all for summer knits. So I'm all set up. The other thing that I bought, which I am in love with, is a new crochet hook. And I wanted to try this brand, it's called Tulip. They're made in Japan. They have, I believe, like three lines that I saw, silver, rose, and red. And I just went ahead and bought the red. This is a five. I just wanted to try it and see, but I love them. What a difference this hook made working. Oh, so good. Doesn't get caught, glides very easily through the yarn. Very, very light. The ergonomics and the design, they're perfect. The way it holds on your thumb, it's great. I love them. I am definitely buying more of these, but I wanted to just buy one and try it out. So if anybody, you know, any crocheters out there that are thinking about getting Tulip, go for it. Fantastic. I don't really know what the difference is between the pink, you know, like the rose and the silver and the red. I just picked the red. I didn't go, you know, that deep in research, but I, I love these. And they come in like such a beautiful case. So if you want to invest, like, you know, first try it and see if you like it. But I'm saying in the future, like to invest in a little case. They're so pretty. The cases and the hooks and everything. I'm super happy with this purchase. So I'm definitely getting a few more in different sizes because definitely worth it. So that's it for all my acquisitions this month. And like I said, my next project is to sort out through all my summer patterns and select what I want to make with the yarn that I bought so that's very exciting that's like one of the most fun process about you know creating whether you're crocheting or whether you're knitting it's sorting out through all the beautiful patterns that are being put out there for now for summer and selecting your yarn and your color and sitting down with all this inspiration and getting creative and seeing what you want to make and what yarn and what color and i think that's so much fun so that's my next project that i'm going to be working on i will put a video together for you guys and show you what patterns i selected with what yarn i'm going to use and i'm really excited to work on that thank you so much you guys for watching for sticking around if you did stick around to the end thank you so much i hope that you learned something along the way Way. If you're a beginner knitter and you're curious or intrigued about lace patterns, again, this peacock tee, I recommend it's an easy pattern for any beginner. The, the chart is very easy. The repeat is very easy. So you will not have a problem with that. You're just knitting and purling and making increases, you know, one laugh, one right. So it's very simple, the repeat. And don't forget to tell me in the comments your experience with open stitch markers. If you guys already know that that happens and you tend to just put a close, a close marker or am I the only one getting, you know, my yarn cord on that? Again, not anymore because I'll use a close marker. I already do that for my regular increases. So share in the comments and let me know. Also let me know what you thought about the yarn that I bought, the colors that I selected. What are you making this summer? Are you making any summer knit? Have you tried this specific yarn that I bought? This is first time for me knitting summer knits and also working with this yarn from Lion Brand. So I'm excited and curious to see how it knits up. So feel free to comment. If you have any questions regarding the items that I make, feel free to ask. I'll definitely read your comment and respond to all your questions. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, and comment, and feel free to share. Thank you so much for your time. Happy knitting, happy making, and stay tuned for my next video. It's all about what I'm making this summer and the yarns that I'm going to be using for those knits. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.